The doctors, they don't talk, say he is sick. If anything happened there and there because simply because the government refused for let it let and go, then we are in trouble as a okay. government. Uh, good morning, Salon. We come to you from the Society for Radio Democracy 98.1 FM. As we mentioned in Sawampa, we headline stories them. We they talk to the speaker for Equas Parliament, we na Mohammed Sidi Tunis. We don't join we na the studio now for can talk about the work of Equas Parliament and activities them and the end of tenor for Salon na the Equas speakership. For Sika Data, I want to welcome Mr. Tunis inside the program. Good morning and welcome to the program. Good morning, Salon. Good morning, uh, 98.1. Good morning, Ms. Salon people then. Okay, the ECWA speaker, now one of the institutions them of uh, the economic community of West Africa, we in ECWAS, we then established in accordance with the Article 6 and 13 of the ECWAS Treaty. This body, the help uh, mediate dialogue, consultation, and also consensus building for representative for West Africa countries them for promote integration, peace and other issues them in the West African region. Well, Salon be part of Salon take the leadership of ECOWAS Parliament inside 2020 and the turn of Salon the end this year as now full year the uh, ECOWAS speakership they last for for each country. Salon the Olam for the last full year and the person we all this position we deal with another studio now for can tell we how it don't tell like since Salon take the leadership of ECOWAS and how important for the part of institutions like these and the activities of ECOWAS. Once again, I want to welcome Mohamed Sidi inside the program. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hi. Yes, from that small background where I don't give about ECOWAS, how we don't tell like for the past few years as Speaker of ECOWAS Parliament? Well, first of all, uh, I tell the Almighty Allah, Boko Boko, thank you for we don't give me the opportunity for serve and I also want to say Boko Boko thank you to His Excellency the President when I nominate me we are able to get a job there. Unfortunately I take over at the time immediately I take over COVID struck. So we had a situation where a lot of people people even think say that was the end. But um, the ECOWAS Parliament would decide to say no will go ahead and uh, we'll be able to begin for work. And I think we have done a lot of work. I'm very, very happy that as a Sierra Leonean, I'm very, very proud that uh, we're able to do a job, we're able to exercise with prerogative, we're able to contribute to the integration processes in West Africa. So in terms of you being the speaker of the... Um Fifth ECOWAS Parliament. Tell me how you feel. You feel fulfilled, or you think say, side in the way you feel, and feel not able for achieve such. I things. feel very, very much fulfilled. Like any institution, you go in with a lot of plans. I can say that we are able for achieve a whole lot of what we go in for. We are able at the same time, while we have not achieved a lot, we are not able also achieve others. One, because of time. Number two, because of, uh, like I said earlier on, we wasted almost one year of mid-tenure because of COVID. But I can assure you that even those areas which I will not um, achieve, we don't able to create so much awareness and we don't get so much commitment from stakeholders across the region to the point that me successful definitely Go carry on with me don't stop. So before you talk about things that we be promised and the one that we are able to do mm -hmm. and the one that we get challenged enough for achieve, I would describe the support, the term the way you know be the speaker with the fifth equas parliament. Mm -hmm. When I talk about support, I talk directly from government. Though you be the represent different region, but you be the represent salon at the same time. You know, one advantage where I get to admin tenure, but the fact say Apart from the fact that the president, President Bill, nominated me, and but he he be did like uh, like he picking he did, bio bio I'm take take through these four years, 
I got a lot of support from him. He, he advised me, which side he gets most more issues. I did call him. He would tell me, give me advices and things like that. But I think uh, we also be able to get support from almost all the heads of state and the sub-region. As a matter of fact, for the first time in the history of ECOWAS Parliament, the presidents and the sub-region be much, much more involved in ECOWAS Parliament's activities than any other time or under any other speaker. I interacted with all of them and they were very, very supportive. If I call a president today that, uh, Your Excellency, I want to discuss this kind of issues with you, he will immediately tell me, Tunis, you can come. Now, how it sounds like for be speaker in the Salon Parliament and also or for be a member in the Salon Parliament, mm -hmm. who say you represent uh, your people them, and also be speaker of ECOWAS Parliament, who say they represent Salon at large? First of all, for become speaker, I for be member of Parliament. Now, yeah, not the requirement. Now, the main requirement that you for if for be be a current a city member of parliament in your country before you become speaker so even as i sit here as speaker of ECOWAS parliament i'm still a sitting member a current member of this really uh, parliament uh, are we the balance the two representation number one the Suryanium parliament give me the leeway the speaker his excellency uh, dr abbas bundu give me the leeway it give me the authority say you can go so i get the freedom unlike any other mp um, where you absence from parliament for 21 days to the case you the law the case you, bet you <coughs> me that law didn't debate me because i have the authority for go out and walk so you know they give so much wherever, back to the parliament here at home no no whenever i'm in Sierra Leone, I did make sure say uh, I did go for sitting for see what did happen. But apart from that also, apart from even going for sittings, I have always uh, interacted with MPs, the leadership, issues that are a little bit controversial in Parliament. I will have a conversation with the leadership. We all go to the door with this gossip. I will, and uh, they have been doing extremely well, I must say. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, from Parliament standpoint, the leadership of Parliament go understand the rule and the mantle of leadership you get and mm -hmm. give you that leeway. Mm -hmm. What about the people that we been the represent? How you been the balance, the strike, and what you, how you they explain to them, say, perhaps this not my situation at the moment? The people that are the Pujan district, uh, especially constituency 101, before the uh, district block system come in, they're very, very, very understanding. Because they and they're also very, very proud that the UMP now not the number one legislature, not the sub region. The fact that that title alone is fulfilling to them, not my constituency. Apart from that, I think uh, for a parliamentarian, you always have to go back to your people. So, whenever I have the opportunity to do so, I go there. So, you think so you get equal? I mean. Giving back or you play equal role mm -hmm. as a, I mean, member of parliament here in Ceylon, as much as will you be be the um, ECOWAS speaker of parliament as well? The I cannot be. First of all, as as a member of uh, parliament, as a radio, mm -hmm. I have a role to play, to participate in lawmaking, in oversight, and all of those things. Mm -hmm. Then jobs and the, because of my current role as speaker of ECOWAS parliament. They make sure, say, the, the parliament give me the leeway to go ahead and do the, the parliamentary work in the ECOWAS. But my representative role in my constituency, I make sure, say, I continue to perform them. Because whenever there are issues in my constituency, the constituents, my constituents will always contact me and I make sure, say, I deal with them all the way. Besides, we have uh, holidays uh, sometimes. I have programs in Liberia. Every time, for example, I had about two or three sittings in, in Liberia, mm -hmm. I always went through my constituency. I make sure, say, I spent a few days in my constituency before going to Liberia. 
Okay. Um, before you be a core speaker, before the nominee for be a core speaker, you know, been the leader of government business now salon, mm -hmm. and there was a time when there was a controversy whether uh, you for old one position or you for old boot. But you let go the 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 leadership of government business mm -hmm. now parliament and take mm -hmm. the equa speakership at any moment you don't regret decisions like that or you think say that was the right thing to do no first of all um me go one me, me left one uh, the position of leader of government business was a decision mm -hmm. of the party in the beginning i didn't like it because be, for example, I have four deputies. I have four deputy, deputy speakers in ECOWAS Parliament. Mm -hmm. All of them hold positions in the countries. Some of them are first deputy speakers. For example, mm -hmm. the me first deputy speaker and the deputy speaker of Nigeria Parliament. So we mm -hmm. get a situation where in me as speaker, I mean I'll be the only person who will not get a position in the country. I was just a member. Of the, of the so mm -hmm. initially I told everybody no I cannot we have to do this well when you have responsible leadership in the party they will always sit and consult and say look you have this position mm -hmm. leave this one and go and I accepted and then I can tell you that was the best decision initially yes as a human being I didn't want to leave the position of leader of government business I mean, they just go ECOWAS Parliament. I don't be know the magnitude of the job way they don't give me. It was later I realized that if I before remain as leader of government business, trust me, I don't be for able to perform in any way absolutely. I don't be for even able to do the work, the two jobs together, because the the speakership in ECOWAS Parliament is so demanding. Like you said in your introduction. One of our major roles in our mediation, and we have a uh, region in crisis, so to say. Okay. So they look forward to the Speaker of ECOWAS Parliament to provide the leadership to move from place to place. So there is no way I would have continued to be leader of government business. Okay, continue. So I, and I both say thanks to my president and to the chairman of my party, Prince Hardin, who insisted that, look, you must leave this job and focus on the speakership. So I appreciate it very much. Okay. The program Good Morning Salon they continue. We will bring this edition come to you this Tuesday morning. Me na sapiti you kalon. And Musa Kamara na me yunim. In the edition of the program, if you just the join we, we they talk to the speaker of the Equas Parliament, we na Mohamed Sidi Tunis. They talk about internal how we been talk like as salon in time they don't this year as salon been take the speakership of ECOWAS inside 2020 March and 2024 in the end it therefore talk about how we don't talk and same way so it could talk about the 2024 parliamentary seminar and extraordinary session of ECOWAS parliament we go upon in say Freeton from tomorrow to February 12. Well um, before we go for that break we will talk about the representation how we be able to balance the two represent representation them now look go to the work of the parliament proper when you go na ECOWAS parliament what in have been the plans them with Muhammad Sidi Tunis being get for achieve as roadmap for you work now parliament as speaker of ECOWAS parliament inside you four year term well thank you very much when I took over in March 2020 I'll be I mean, in other speech, I've been mean, list a whole lot of things the way I've been talking I would do. Some of them not be for improve the relationship between the ECOWAS Parliament and other community institutions. We contribute for peace in the sub region. We deploy parliamentary missions for elections observation. They will pay particular attention to budgeting of projects and programs and uh, also contribute to community standards and formulation of policies. Then I be insist for say people they're not having nothing about the ECOWAS Parliament.
that I want to make sure say I bring the parliament to the people and also to instill accountability and transparency in the parliament's operations and support women, then we make uh, raise awareness for direct elections. So I believe saying almost all of them here we be able for do um, we in fact for transparency and accountability for the first time in the history of the parliament I be able for create the public accounts committee where they actually look at the all the entire audit report of the ECOWAS institutions. It never happened before. We have an audit committee but for Parliament to actually scrutinize that report, it never ever happened before. Not only under me, leadership as speaker, we will introduce on the website. The auditors are now go come in to Parliament, explain, and areas him. We we believe say, therefore pay more attention. And um, on the issue of the women. There is an uh, organization in the parliament called ECOFEPA, that are the ECOWAS Free Parliamentarians Organization. Mm -hmm. This organization will be done there. But for the first time, honorable leadership are able to create a budget line for them, a million budget, that the ECOWAS parliament. Instead of they just they get copy hands, they go from one institution to the other for support them for their business. For the, for the first time, are able to get $600,000 from the budget for me to carry on their activities. And the activities where this particular organization will take place, they don't, they, do, they don't do more than any other, under any other speaker. But like I said, there are areas we are also not able to succeed. For example, I be one for create a youth parliament. And uh, I also want to make sure, say, under this legislature, we're able to elect we members them through direct suffrage. In other words, the community people in West Africa, for able for say, like the EU parliament, they able for vote, say, okay, now Mr. A, we want to make you go to ECOWAS parliament. Because at the moment, now the parliament of Sierra Leone nominate people for good from their EU membership. So my intention was always to make sure say we get people then we then go able for with the community, the entire population go able for vote for them for good now the ECOWAS parliament. Even though we're not able to achieve that, but we don't create so much awareness that almost every president in the sub region don't give me support towards direct election, including my own president. His Excellency Dr. Julius Marabio. So I strongly believe, say, the awareness on the, we don't do a lot, and the, whatever they can take over from me, definitely will carry on with that particular job. I, I see they talk, I take notes, and uh, I highlight some points, them, we, we do look at inside the program. One, you talk about part of your agenda, then, now peace, now the sub region. Mm -hmm. And you also talk about election observations and election outcomes in mm -hmm. Africa for Ghan, uh, ECOWAS for Ghana Transparency and Accountability. You talk about standards and information, and also you talk about unity amongst African countries. Them. We start for look at the one number list, we now peace. Under um, you tenor as ECOWAS speaker, we see the West African region Four of the states them they under military rule. We na coup d'état. We of course West Africa na the highest in terms of coup d'état na African continent. We Burkina Faso they under military rule. G Niger, uh, Mali and Guinea all mm -hmm. they under. In terms of peace, what in Ecowas make up of this um, development and the latest press release from three of the countries them say they don't come on Ecowas. They are not member again. Well, first of all, you know coup d'état. Now the worst thing that we could happen in any country. And as parliamentarians, we always condemn any kind of coup d'etat to the, in the strongest terms. But we also 
not only they look at the coup d'etat, we also they look at good governance as parliamentarians, ECOWAS parliament in particular. We look at good governance. One of the things that I personally have done continuously, now for visit countries um, where I believe, say, they got issues. For example, <laughs> in Mali, my team, I don't just visit Mali because I knew there were serious problems in Mali. I go there for engage with the authorities then, I met with the president, with some of the ministers, accommodate. Then I sent a team in for continuing my work of mediating between the opposition and the government. My team day inside Mali where the could take place. If I, I began for talk to the, the, foreign, the foreign minister of Nigeria them for using playing for go pick up me MPs and you know so as parliamentarians we have always done our bit for make sure say we encourage good governance in the sub region. Corruption also now one of the issues that we we always on the preach against because these are all the factors with every military man with the kind of power, you go talk say, oh, the country is corrupt. You go talk say there is bad governance. So those, these are the two areas we be done the focus on for Prish and the sub region. And most of the worker will be me personally be the worker along with my MPs. And apart from the fact that they send them on missions, not be on those two issues. Then. And I must say, honestly, in all fairness, Sierra Leone has done extremely well when it comes to good governance and control of corruption. We'll come back to you. You can't tell me more on the things, um, <coughs> excuse me, on the things we're able to achieve in that area, the, on the area of governance and other one them also we able to do as Speaker of the Fifth Equus Parliament. Well, that's not the voice of Sidi Mohammed Tune, Speaker of the Fifth Equus Parliament. We don't need to take religion and via them through on our internal, that in four years, they don't tell it. We a be speaker of the fifth ECOWAS parliament. The, the pro program Good Morning Salon they continue. And inside the program now we continue with with studio guests as we get the speaker of the fifth ECOWAS parliament, Sidi Mohammed Tunis. We don't need to talk about how we don't tell like for be um speaker of ECOWAS parliament for the last um four year. And if we don't start for talk about in achievements, successes and things that we not be able for do also. Over to you, Speaker of ECOWAS Parliament. Before we do go further in Saturday, you'll be end with the word for say Salon. They do well in terms of governance. You can give more in-depth explanation on that. Yeah, what do you mean exactly? Absolutely. Absolutely. You see, governance issues. Yeah. A, a lot of people out there may be thinking that because of the small, small issues, sometimes when they happen between the two main political parties, uh, it they affect seriously governance issues. Yes. But Sierra Leone are one of the few countries um, we get structures. Sierra Leone is one of the few countries um, we, in terms of governance, you they actually see say, things in the work. The cracks what we they observe, I, I mean, I'm talking to you as a community speaker, as a community speaker. The cracks we see in governance structures in most of the West African countries will not get an eye. The, from the presidency to the ministers, yeah, you have few issues here and there. But trust me, in terms of governance issues, we are doing this extremely well. And governance is not just about running the state. There are things in we the we surround the governance issues, corruption and one of them. Human rights, not the other one. Sri Leon, we have had our own share of issues regarding human rights, especially when it comes to politics and things like that. But if you put up a scale, I can confirm to the people of this country that Sri Leon is doing extremely well. Yeah. And uh, if you look at also our fight against corruption, we now a very very key factor. We will talk. We will talk about governance. You finally say Sierra Leone has also done extremely well. 
There are countries I will visit in this sub-region. I will not name them. But there are countries I will visit in this sub-region. To be very honest with you, sometimes you don't even know whether somebody is in control or not. But Sierra Leone, we must say thanks. Yes, I'm, by saying this, I'm not saying we don't have problems. No. Because somebody got us, ah, but the APC and the SLP always affect. They are, we are politicians. Trust me, we are politicians. We will always have our differences. But I've always encouraged my party and the opposition in Israel for dialogue. And I believe dialogue not the only way out. Dialogue not the only thing way it will bring this country and every Sierra Union on track for progress and development. We all, me, don't go out there for four years. I've seen how other countries are run. I don't see, like I tell you, with not the governance problems and we these countries and get. I can say it. I mean, I would not even hesitate to say it that it's really we are doing well. But what if somebody say which you speak to now, not mm. to the reality on the ground? Which angle already possible? But that's what I'm saying. Now that I'm going to tell you, I say when you day on the ground, you go only begin for think about what did they happen on the ground. But I, what I'm talking about, I'm, I mean, in a comparative analysis, we do. I didn't look at other countries and I didn't look at Sierra Leone. You understand what I'm saying? In, in, in other countries, you see so many cracks in the governance structure compared to Sierra Leone. And that's why I've, I've said, Sierra Leone, we have our own issues. Definitely. It's, it's not all honey. I can't. I can't say that. No. It, I can't say that. It's not. But we must, my advice and my uh, plea here is to continue to talk to our people and uh, especially the government because the government has more to do than the opposition. When they talk about people talking, I know they put too much emphasis on the opposition. Opposition or opposition? I've been in opposition before. I don't kind of governance. I don't go opposition. I don't have I governance. So for me, the most important thing is to talk to the government to continue to dialogue. Okay, now, so the issue of the things that we will state about, things that we will be able to achieve, and also you mentioned the issue of the single ECOWAS currency, where you be so much emphasized on for say, it will try for ensure say, the realization of single ECOWAS country there within the ECOWAS subregion, as well for enhance the smooth running of business among the different um, country there. In that area, the now one way you consider as a success for you? For me, not to be responsible for ECOWAS single currency. No, but not you emphasize on that not to be different engagements. Not, so to, try for use. not to not to ECOWAS parliament per se. You know, we get a lot of uh, convergence criteria, a lot of prerequisite for me a country go able for joining single currency. But I cannot name them. But your advocacy yeah. speak to any Yes, absolutely. That's where, I'm, that's where I'm coming. In and uh, at least four or five cases, the parliament don't sit down and talk mainly just for that one day. And the reason for that is to create awareness amongst our leaders and also the community for make sure, say, the only way uh, the economic community of West African state, ECOWAS, is going to develop. Now, we at the common area would be ECHO, Nasir the same money I got in my hand when I reached to Abuja, the same money I use. Sierra Leone be able for Sudan here and buy something in Togo or buy something in Benin using the same currency. That they enhance trade and in, a, in, a, in so many ways okay. also they reduce poverty. We don't talk about uh, earlier. Some of the interventions them we you see when I don't do now other mm -hmm. countries them for ensure say peace day. Mm -hmm. And uh, take you back to Salon situation. And as one of the woke up the ECOWAS Parliament na dialogue. Mm -hmm. And we see of recent the first time president of Salon, Ernest Bakuma, been left for go uh, then say on medical ground. Mm -hmm. 
and we see an issue of letter from ECOWAS mm -hmm. for Mick Ego, and we see exchanges whether or not whose role ECOWAS play or ECOWAS parliament play in situation like this, whether the first time president for gone medical or not, or the letter is from ECOWAS or not. You see, in the ECOWAS system, um, we get the authority of heads of states within the presidency, now the highest body that one name. The second layer, now the council, council of ministers, then are then foreign ministers, and they get a young club, what they call a council of ministers. Once the young kingdom, the management now did it. But in the management of ECOWAS also, we have uh, like a board of directors. Board of directors, more or less, now the president of the commission, president of the ECOWAS court, myself, the speaker of ECOWAS parliament, the director general of JIBA, I'm sure the, the anti money laundry, then the director general of WAHO and the auditor general. Now we did not about them. So when we are doing, when issues sometimes, for example, like right now, we have a situation where, like you mentioned earlier on, three countries, Mali, Burkina Faso, and Niger, they said that they left ECOWAS. The Lord Express said that they left ECOWAS. Consultations, they go on right now. Those consultations, that's where we come in. The president of the commission, as a chair, we consult all of us. We call us. What is your opinion on this? You give you the gear your opinion. From there, it escalates to the council of ministers. It will call uh, Minister Timothy Kaba, explain to him, say this is the situation. Our opinions, like the board, where they talk about, we mean a member, na ECOWAS. Then. Opinion and they, they discuss them with the council when uh, people like uh, uh, Minister Timothy Kaba and in colleagues in the sub region amongst themselves that consultation will go on amongst themselves. So, you, you one would expect, say, as the consultations they go amongst themselves, Timothy Kaba could they could they brief in principle when the president. So, it they reach a point where they escalate them. To that level, we said the president, and I would say, Okay, this has been going on, let us do this, let us do that. In most cases, that's when they will call for what they call summit. We can, like here, say, Echo was a meet today, Echo was a meet to Barra, and they can't stand it. So, it has something where they develop, and then that development, you know, we're all involved. We are all involved, and uh, on the issue of Saloon in the build up to election, somebody gets a concern and say, In one of the sessions of the Equus Parliament, we saw where you took off the hat of speakership and sat as an ordinary member to clearly explain the electoral boundary issue where ECSL did not conduct. The opposition was against it, but you defended the, the position of ECSL in the Equus Parliament. At that time, waiting being lead the Speaker of Equas Parliament for take for going at the ordinary session and ensure say defend the ECSL even when the opposition was against it. Well, first of all, like uh, I said earlier on, you know the you know the be speaker if you know the member of parliament in your country, and for being we we the be speaker if for don't they as member of the delegation. From Sierra Leone, me a member of the delegation from Sierra Leone Parliament to the ECOWAS Parliament, and from we from where they take me for be speaker. If at the preside, and issues don't come concerning Sierra Leone, at that particular thing we they talk about, I be the preside, and then um, I open the floor, and then I find out the issues that they come. Me, me colleagues in we be they, I know they are very very capable. I must say they are very, very capable people. Honorable Veronica Sisi, Honorable Shaka Sama, and um, I think Honorable Mali Spain. You know, they are very, very capable people. But I just believe that those issues were so sensitive and it be the, the reputation of the country be there at stake. So I began for, under our rules, I began for ask me deputy for takeover. Why I go down 
to the chamber as an ordinary member of parliament because we rules and provide for that. And I began to go explain because the issues as I be, I believe so, as I be very well, those issues and uh, I'll be able to go down the explain. And to and that's 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 now one way opposition being very frown at that then take and perhaps say you defending ECSL in the in relation to conduct of the election and this now one way being uh, get for I, was not, that, that, I was not the way it ECSL. appears I that, was the way it the appears I was or defending the country because the issue where they come up with it was not an issue of ECSL it was a governance issue it was Sierra Leone we were talking about. So in my opinion, as a member of the delegation, I've been facing because, in fact, as a deputy leader of the delegation, because at the time, Honorable Chernoba, Nabi Cherikoko, Nabi the leader of the delegation, me Nabi in deputy. So for me, as leader of the delegation, when governance issues of that nature come up, I don't think, say, I for just sit down, I fold my hand for say, oh, I'm a speaker. I believe say, it's, it was necessary and will be get the right platform for explaining to the people of West Africa. Let me not forget say, when ECOWAS Parliament meets, every time when ECOWAS Parliament meets, you have journalists from all over West Africa and beyond, especially uh, France. France journalists, the French journalists are always there, almost all the time. You have the Caribbean journalists and they're always there. So if they are talking about something about Sierra Leone, I believe say now be an opportunity for me for come and clarify the issue. I think and we did extremely well at that time for explain because even my colleague MPs will not be understand. We probably they just they just hear it, then corridor politics. They decide say no, the explanation will give was very good. So in line with the issue of um, former President Ernest Baikoma, what you will say about the old procedure and process would they use for take a decision on um, for Senam Amna Nigeria? You think it was a duly process followed? Okay. You know, we you, he was talking about, we were talking about dialogue. Let me just come to that first. Some people may ask, you don't do all this in uh, other countries. What about Sierra Leone? I just want for report for say I had several meetings with the former president. I had I had several mini meetings with the current president. In fact, um, I'm sure there was a time when uh, the social media then talked a lot about me for say uh, they see me I don't go get meeting with President Koroma. But I'm a job. I not meet I not meet President Koroma as member of parliament of Sierra Leone. I met President Kroba as speaker of ECOWAS parliament. And before I met President Kroba, a lot of people not be even know. I had a meeting with the President Bio first before I go meet uh, President Kroba. So the dialogue has been there. I've had engagement with several opposition leaders, of course, in the uh, Mion party okay. leadership. On the issue of President Kroba, uh, I know say, there was this uh, back and forth thing about him. But as far as I know, President Koroma is a 70-year-old man. What is your thing back and forth? Which exactly? The, what he was talking about. I'm referring to what he was talking about, the letters, you know, whether it was a procedure or procedural issue and things like that. Number one, ECOWAS, they only give support to sovereign states. ECOWAS, no, they interfere into what they happen in any sovereign state. That's the first thing I just want to make very, very clear. President Kroba, former President Kroba, now a 70-year-old man, who the security forces allege for, say, be involved by something that will happen in the country, and they decide, say, that it can go court. Like I said, Sierra Leone has done extremely well when it comes to human rights. And when you, as a country, when your human rights credentials, they're up there, 
you don't want to take any chances for dentam any longer. If you have a 70 year old man, a former president, facing trial, for sick, the best thing any country will want to do is to provide treatment for him as soon as possible. I believe that is just exactly just what the president, uh, what the government of Sierra Leone has done okay. to ensure that this 70 year old man is treated abroad. If anything happens to President Kumar Naya, he's sick. The doctors, the doctors say he is sick. If anything happened Naya, and then because simply because the government refused for let it, let her go, then we are in trouble as a okay. government. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So for so, me, that's so, that's just it. So so quick one, and uh, before we. Um, go for a break quick. Uh, earlier, we make mention of the 2024 parliamentary seminar and the extraordinary session with Apuna Freeton. Just give a highlight on this meeting we acquired again at Freeton from tomorrow to the 12th. Like I said earlier, on, uh, on my leadership, I want to say that this parliament, the ECOWAS parliament, the ECOWAS parliament, don't get more visibility than any other legislature. I know that. The social media platforms, okay. the citizens' participation, the women's participation, the youth, the social media platforms to tell we clearly that the community people don't show interest. And even me as speaker, I've been invited on several occasions in South America, in Pan African Parliament, to address parliaments. The most recent one was in Morocco. I was in Morocco. I address the parliament. I went to South Africa, I address the Pan African Parliament. I went to Panama, I address the parliament. You know, in fact, the entire South American parliament, just like how we get with your ECOWAS parliament, they invited me to address them. And the only reason why all of these things are happening is because of what they see the ECOWAS parliament they do within these four years, the fifth legislature. So definitely, we are doing a lot. And one of the things, um, one of the ways in we would try for bring the ECOWAS to the people, now through these extraordinary sessions, through the seminars that will move them away from the headquarters in Abuja and bring them to any country in West Africa. What's it, what's in this particular case, yes. I decided that uh, I should bring it to Australia because Namila's seminar in my last extraordinary session, this as Speaker of ECOWAS Parliament. So I just believe see, it was better for me to bring it back home for several reasons. One, for the person who nominate me, wouldn't the president, for Yeri, in the presence of all my colleagues, the job we you send me for go do, I don't come back home, I don't go do the job. This now happened. So the people of Sierra Leone also, the Parliament of Sierra Leone, we give me the support all this why. They were here with you don't do. That's why we are encouraging people to come tomorrow to the Bintumani President, His Excellency President Julius Manabio, Godede for open the seminar, and I go there also for address the August body for explain what we don't do during this ten millennium as Speaker of ECOWAS Parliament. Uh, number one, I think, let me just start with uh, me and baby, when I echo FEPA. Echo FEPA, the, the ECOWAS Female Parliamentarians Association, then major objective, now for make sure, say, then able for incorporate women then, from across the region, so definitely, the fem let's for example, the female caucus in the ECOWAS, I mean, in Sierra Leone Parliament, definitely could benefit from their activities. And just for say further, the ECOFEPA that they get a town hall meeting. We we'll don't get them before the Abuja. And uh, a lot of people, they come here. In fact, we got some students from Fulbright College, from IPAM from the uh, market, from marketplaces, from up country, 
where we take them all go Abuja. Almost uh, 20 people that we will take go Abuja for experience sharing with Echo Fepa. So definitely, Echo Fepa is not just about ECOWAS female members of parliament, but also all women in the sub-region. One for encourage affirmative action, which is really don't do for give 30% quota to women. This organization they for advocate for them kind of thing across the region. That is one. Who that they determine who side for credit programs and go Nami. Nami they determine that. Nami they decide say today at the care ECOWAS go Guinea. Today at the care ECOWAS go Sierra Leone. Like now this seminar Nami decides say yes, Naya they bring and come. The funding from Sierra Leone for ECOWAS now the same funding where ECOWAS commission they get, where all ECOWAS institutions they get. Now from the means that they get funding, we're not community levy. You know, the the current speaker who will get now, Dr. Abbas Bundu, now be the be the president of ECOWAS long time ago. During in tenure, Speaker Bundu put a structure in place who say uh, every country, any goods when they bring can at the country. Did they get a small percentage, I think zero, at, at 0 0.5 or 0 0.05 percent, or I think at 0 0.5 percent, as tax, we would they call community levy. Every government, they collect that money they for ECOWAS. That money they now would they use for fund with projects in. And then, uh, the issue of uh, yeah, the issue of uh, this session owner gets within the okay. agenda now, and the, also the issue of payments, the, whether it be the received salary boots. Echo was not a pay salary. Echo was not allowance that they give. Now, I mean, now I had a guest salary. Echo was not a give me salary, but they give me allowance. Of course, even where are they, I didn't have this studio, so right now that they pay me. Because For each appearance? <laughs> not by appearance, not <laughs> by appearance. <laughs> Now, what can they work? They don't, because of this seminar where they get now, ECOWAS don't begin pay me from yesterday. All the waka waka where are the waka waka, they, they pay me. ECOWAS parliament, they pay me for all the waka waka where are the waka waka. So they need to give me salary per se, but they, they give me allowance every month. They give me allowance, and every side of the good they pay me for that one day. The seminar we will get this time around. Now, would they always choose topics for seminar them? Would they choose topics then where they affect uh, the region? In, the in this case, now illegal mining. The effect of illegal mining in West Africa. Now, would they talk about this time around? If you check the data we get in uh, ECOWAS right now, if you take country like uh, Nigeria, the entire Northwest Nigeria, almost 80% of the mining where they take place in illegal mining. And this illegal mining get direct effect on security and the economy. So, as some of them, did they go to the point of banditry, thuggeries, did they kidnap people them, and all of those things. So the countries, then they lose big time because of uh, illegal mining. If you check Sierra Leone today, I don't know the data for Sierra Leone, but you will find out that we have always have issues of people involved in illegal gold mining in some places in uh, the, in the north and uh, south in particular. So, so all of these things uh, they affect the economy. Uh, That's why. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. How that supersede the issue of political tension, election integrity, na na the region? When we see immediately after election, you see perhaps the loser they go court Nigeria. It happens, and we see Totam Guinea go into Totam. They overthrow. We give, see Ivory Coast on Totam. The issue of governance and the issue of coup d'état and the issue of elections. Somebody go say these are topical issues if you compare them to illegal mining. 
Why Equus choose? Money, illegal mining, Le illegal illegal mining. mining that we are dealing with today, not just one of the topics that we would only deal with. We don't get uh, almost, if I'm not mistaken, about 14 seminars during this midterm, if I'm not mistaken. And the issue of governance that you are talking about, we don't get, uh, was it last year? Or year before, year before last, 2020, 2022. 2022 in Ghana, Winneba, I get a seminar day where I invite, even from here, I invite uh, civil society people from here. Our current electoral commissioner, Mr. Kone, well, I invite him now to Ghana. I invite the former IG, Zevola. I invite uh, Marcela Samba, uh, uh, Mr. Fatoma. These are civil okay. society people. I invite them all come. And, there is, and then I invite electoral commissioners and the inspector general of police and from all over West Africa and civil society for more who we'll sit down and talk about governance so in, term in of, Ghana. In terms of a four-year in Taino, you know, go describe our map some few ways smooth and easy on get percent. So it must get key challenges. You know, Quickly highlight. Now, I'll be done tell you. I'll be done highlight them before. First, the first thing will happen to me. You said the we COVID, start apart from that. On a very, start. very wrong note or bad note with COVID. And one of the main plans now be for make sure say ECOWAS parliamentarians that they elect them mm -hmm. by direct oh. universal oh. suffrage. Oh. It not happen. Okay. But the awareness reason be it the way up there up to ninety uh, percent. Uh, 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 you know. Uh, as we round up the program, what in City Tunis go moment Tunis they point at as an achievement or ECOWAS benefits to Salon under internal. Quick one. Quick one. No one the visibility uh, of Sierra Leone itself, being a Sierra Leonean with all of these achievements globally, and not just in West Africa. That is, a, for me, that is what I carry for Sierra Leone. When you talk about visibility of uh, ECOWAS parliament, you talk about the visibility of CD Tunis. And when you talk about the visibility of CD Tunis, definitely you're talking about Sierra Leone. Here is a Sierra Leonean guy where he come take over an institution where many people not be even know about this real union he able to take that institution from let's say point twenty percent to the that institution day point seventy percent that by itself carry the country because it's the image of the country that I carry I believe say that that the biggest benefit West Real Union will get from my membership our speakership in the ECOWAS Parliament. So in tomorrow's program, what would they expect? President Jesus Madapie will be there to address, for, formally open the session. And we have a lot of people from West Africa. Of course, the diplomatic corps will also be there. And I'm inviting all of you to come. Okay. Uh, plenty thank you for we joining me inside the program and uh, plenty thank you for coming. And I want to say boku 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 thank you to President Julius Madabi for we give me the opportunity for serve in this position as Speaker of Equals Parliament. I also want to tell boku boku thank you to Speaker Abbas Bunu, the leadership in the Parliament, and all my colleague members of Sierra Leone Parliament and the people of Sierra Leone for we give me the opportunity. Me time done done. I am coming back to Sierra Leone. And we all can go back to Salon Parliament. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for joining me inside the program. Uh, good morning, Salon Mohamed Sidi Tunis, the outgoing, I can say, Fleputan, so ECOA speaker. We don't serve uh, for four years on the uh, Salon Tenor. Oh. We then don't be member or leader of the ECOWAS Parliament. And uh, same way, we talk about the session we they start tomorrow to the 12th of February 2024. We the open tomorrow at the Bintumani Conference Center. Sabti? Well, uh, this edition of the program Good Morning Salon Electoral Discipline to take it all. And then we come on board for make sure see we able to bring this edition of the program Good Morning Salon come to you this Tuesday morning. With that, at the seminar, Sabti, you alone. Continue for listening to Radio Democracy and goodbye. And Musa Kamarisi, have a wonderful day. Bye bye.